This is a Tesla Model Y. Not only one of the best-selling EVs in the US right now, but one of the top-selling cars in the world. It's obviously a huge success for Tesla, but is the car itself a success? Tesla has received flack for years for general poor craftsmanship in their cars, a questionable build quality overall, and a general disregard for safety when it comes to their software, particularly driver assistance features. But what's it like to actually own one? Well, we bought this one, and after 1,600 miles of testing and over three months of ownership, it's time for our full review. For our Model Y, we wanted to lease a long-range variant to get the full 330 miles of EPA estimated range. We paid an extra $1,000 for the deep blue metallic paint, but stuck with the smaller wheels to avoid another $2,000 upcharge and a ride quality downgrade. The tow hitch hidden behind the rear bumper was another $1,000 and another $1,000 for the white interior. Finally, and most egregiously, we paid $10,000 for the quote-unquote full self-driving upgrade something we're still waiting to receive. Total price came out to $67,490, including $1,200 in delivery, with Tesla calculating a $48,980 residual after the 24-month term. Mind you, Tesla has already raised the price on that car since we got it, and will probably have raised it again by the time this video gets published, so good chance your cost will be different. And what do you get for your money? Well, you get yourself a nice, comfortable crossover SUV. There's tons of headroom up front and plenty in the back too. And if you fold the rear seats down, you've got 76 cubic feet of cargo space. That makes it far more practical than the Model 3 with its funny little trunk opening. And other than the $7,000 upcharge over the Model 3 long range, you're not really giving up much of anything either. The handling here is maybe a little bit more compromised than on the sedan, but frankly, the Model 3's handling isn't that great either, so it's not really much of a sacrifice. The ride quality in the Model Y is a little bit less than I'd like, and that's us despite going with the 19-inch wheels, which should give a little bit better than the 20-inchers, but still, it's better than the Mustang Mach-E. And overall, when people talk about the Model Y being fun to drive, they're talking less about the handling and more about the acceleration, <laughs> which never disappoints. Even on the highway where a lot of lower powered EVs run out of steam, the Model Y leaps forward. And keep in mind, this is the long range Model Y, not the performance. In fact, I don't know why anyone would spend the extra five grand and give up 27 miles of range for the Model Y performance. It's plenty quick as it is. And just how many miles of range are we talking about? The Model Y is EPA rated for 330 miles of range on the 19 inch wheels. Tesla doesn't quote a battery size for the Model Y any longer, but the pack is somewhere between 75 and 82 kilowatt hours, which like all Teslas sits down in the floor of the car. That's backed by the nation's most comprehensive and in my testing most reliable charger network. In our fair weather range test, we've been seeing pretty close to the EPA ratings, and the car does a great job of estimating range remaining when you use the integrated nav. I'm curious to see how that holds up over the winter though. I'm also looking forward to seeing how this interior holds up. Normally, I wouldn't recommend paying extra for white upholstery if you actually use your SUV as a utility vehicle. Indeed, ours is already showing a bit of discoloration, and it also feels distinctly rubbery. The bigger talking point in the interior is the display that sits right here in the center and the general lack of physical controls pretty much anywhere else in here. That means you're going to be doing a lot of things through the display. Let me give you a few examples. If you want to change your mirrors, it's two taps here, and then you rely on the left thumb wheel to go up and down or left and right. If you want to change the steering wheel controls again, it's two taps here to bring up that control, and then left control again to go up or down, left or right. Now that's a little clumsy and a little sluggish, but honestly, that's fine because you're not going to be changing those things every day. My bigger concern is with the things that you are going to be doing every day. For example, changing the follow distance with cruise control. You do that now with the right thumb wheel, pushing that right or left. And the problem is, I can never remember if it's right to extend the follow distance or is it left to extend the follow distance. And with any other car on the planet, it's so immediately intuitive that I never have to think about it. But with here, I can just never remember. And then there's the lack of a gauge cluster, which was one of the more talked about features or absent features on the Model 3. Honestly, I don't mind its absence most of the time. It's easy enough to look over and check your speed to the right, but what's harder is checking things like autopilot status, which is situated lower on the display. 
You really have to look a long way from the road to see that. It all works, but the Model Y would be better served with at least a simple gauge cluster or a heads-up display. And for a $70,000 car, that absence feels a bit egregious. It really feels like I should have ventilated seats too, and Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. Of course, part of the reason why this car costs $70,000 is because we paid up for the wildly optimistic, hopelessly delayed, full self-driving package, which costs a whopping ten grand. And that cost is despite this being one of the first Model Ys built without an integrated radar sensor. And that seems to be this car's downfall. The Model Y relies on optical sensors, you know, cameras, to see the world around it. There's an array of them up there in the windscreen, they're on the fenders, in the B-pillar, in the back of the car. And all of those combined allow the car to see the world in 360 degrees and identify objects around it. And that's how it knows to speed up or slow down based on traffic on the highway, to hit the brakes automatically if a pedestrian jumps out, things like that. The problem is, those cameras seem to be getting confused, and they're sometimes struggling to see the world around them, and it's most often evidenced by what's called phantom braking, where the car just, out of nowhere, stops on the brakes. I've had this happen so often that it is really disconcerting, and sometimes so aggressively that the ABS engages. This is not a minor fault. You can imagine the danger of slamming your brakes on the highway should you have someone following closely behind you. This is not okay, and since I know that for many people a Tesla is their first new car, or first new car in a long time anyway, I want to make it abundantly clear. This is not normal. I've seen false positives in other cars, but never with this frequency or this severity. And to be clear, this is unrelated to a full self-driving recall that Tesla issued not long before we filmed this. Our car is not running the recall beta firmware, but the latest production software pushed to all cars. As far as autopilot, the rest of the time goes, it works pretty well on the highway, lane centering even the automatic lane changes, but it still gets confused by secondary roads where lanes split or merge. And I know some of you will say, well, you shouldn't be using autopilot on roads like that. To which I would say, if autopilot is unsafe to use on secondary roads, then Tesla needs to take a cue from Cadillac Super Cruise and others and just disable the damn thing. There is a lot to like about the Tesla Model Y. The range and performance are superb, the comfort and utility are good. I don't even mind the anonymous styling, and I haven't even talked about all the great unique features in this thing like dog mode and the integrated surveillance system. But I have real concerns about the active safety and the sensor package in here, and frankly, I don't think full self-driving is ever going to happen. And I know Tesla will get better, they'll iterate their software, and this system will improve. But that the company would release a car like this and put it on the road and charge you money for it? That to me is unacceptable. So take your money and buy any other EV on the market. There are so many great choices right now. Pick any of those, just don't pick one of these. 